Bam. What's up, sons? It's Blind Red with Son of a Tech. Once again, today we're going to show you how to mine Dynex. The ticker for this particular coin is DNX, and it is showing most profitable on hashrate.no. Now, if you guys have not heard of hashrate.no yet, well, it is a newer, basically, what to mine that has been listing coins more frequently or quickly than you see on what to mine and this is because it is integrated with exchanges that aren't typically included in most mining calculators like of course what to mine or uh, minerstat.com that sort of thing so you get newer gpu coins you get newer asic coins you get newer fpga coins here and that is because, like I said, it is integrated with some exchanges that aren't as popular, such as, but not limited to, TXBit.io, as well as Trade Ogre. So that's why you're seeing things like Nexa pop up here first and DNX pop up here first, is because they are just ahead of the game on profitability. Now, obviously, me giving this to everyone here <laughs> that's watching does mean that this website will become uh, more popular and that does mean that as more people discover this website the coins that are listed on here will suffer the same consequences as the coins that get listed on what to mine as well as miner stat meaning that you'll need to dig even deeper into the discords and subreddits and everything else to find those gems that nobody is mining I'm sorry guys it is what it is i like to share the wealth so that's what we're doing today so like i said what we're looking at in particular is this dnx coin and basically i'm just going to show you guys how to mine it what does that mean i do not condone this coin i do not say that you should purchase it or that it is the bee's knees or anything like that i just know that currently it's showing on profit calculators as the most profitable so we're going to cover it save all the rest as far as opinions what the coin does all that stuff for a wtf is video and we'll get that later on down the line okay so moving on from there you will need to get a wallet i highly recommend not using this particular wallet but we are going to be using it for the how-to the wallet that i recommend using would be the command line wallet which is what i'm using but that being said it is much more difficult to set up and you will need to sync a node and so on so if you're just trying to get set up right now you can create a wallet on this particular website the downside as you can see right here bing bang boom the email address look i do know as you guys know that we can always just create spoof email addresses which is what i would advise you guys to do here that being said any kyc is a red flag with any cryptocurrency but we'll save that for a wtf is later on down the line so to create a wallet in this particular case you will have to basically have an email address tied to it so you can click create a wallet and then you can type in your email address and a password and then just click the create wallet button at this point it will spin it up and get it going and then you can go ahead and sign in from there with your information now you see that there is a 2fa option here i highly recommend you configure 2fa you can configure it on this button here with the configure 2fa option if you would like to download a google play or an app one i still wouldn't click it through the website i would go download your own two-factor authentication outside of this never use hyperlinks to get it through any website you shouldn't trust it it's not a good idea however you will want to confirm you know your key here and you can do this with an application as well called authy which i prefer you can do that on your desktop we'll leave a link to it down below so get 2fa enabled but for now all you really need to do is hit this receive button and click this copy button and this will be your address for your dynex wallet and from here we can go ahead and move into the mining portion and so for the mining portion we're going to head on over to hive and we're going to show you guys how to mine it on hive we're not going to be covering windows today and that is because a majority of you as you may be aware are probably already on hive and they have released a hive package now the hive package is not built into the hive os right now so that does mean that we will have to use a custom miner and i'll show you guys how to set that up so if we go back over here and take a look i'm going to go just to the main page and we're going to hit wallets first and from wallets you're going to go ahead and click the add wallet button and in the ticker you can just 
climb on down for DNX and search for it. It'll be there already. You can press Control V from the address we copied earlier. You can name this like DNX Web Wallet or whatever, just to make sure you know what it is and click the save button. Then from here, we're gonna go ahead and take a move on over to the flight sheet tab. And on the flight sheet tab, we're going to go ahead and click the, the coin ticker down and search for DNX once again. On the wallet, we're gonna select the wallet that we just created. And then on the pool, we will say configure in miner. Now here's where things get fun. We have to select the miner and then go down to custom miner. All right, and then from here, we're gonna click the setup miner config. Okay, so down in the description below, I will have a little link for you guys that you will need to copy out of and paste into here. This in particular is on the Dynex GitHub and it is the hive image for the miner. This will not work in a non-hive image. There's an Ubuntu image that's completely separate. Don't try to use the Ubuntu image in this particular form or fashion of mining on HiveOS. Would it work in HiveOS theoretically? Yes, but you'd need to do it through the command line. And so to do it through the actual custom configuration, you need this particular image and it's gonna give you all the stats that you're kind of looking for. From there, you're gonna go ahead and highlight over here and just click the wallet and worker name, but we're gonna copy the worker name out and we're gonna remove the dot there and we're gonna paste the worker name down in the password. So this will make sure that it takes the wallet name from the configuration and it takes the worker name from the worker name that you actually have. And then that will report the right rigs within the mining pool for this setup. Now, the only US server right now is Ecopool. And in particular, I have had some rejected shares. It starts to kind of stable out over time. And then if I make a configuration change and push everything right away, it'll start to report some invalid shares. I'll get the little down red arrow on my HiveOS reporting, and then it'll come back up and it'll start working okay. There is an option to build a node. I will probably be building a node and mining solo to my node. However, there are also other mining pool options. You can always use the stratum ping pool like we've talked about on this channel before from the two miners website to check the ping or for the best ping for any of these pools. And you can find the pools listed on miningpoolstats.stream forward slash Dynex coin. And as you can see, they're all listed here. However, if you're stateside, the only real option right now is Ecopool. So just keep that in mind. And Ecopool does seem to have a little bit more um, kind of bounciness to its connectivity. I think that it's definitely getting overloaded right now. So I am a little worried that if we do add a bunch of people onto it, it might ha experience issues. That's why I'm gonna start building my node. Just keep an eye on it. It could have some issues. It does seem to be not uh, extremely reliable right now. That being said, at this point you are ready to go. You could do some extra argument configs and we'll go ahead and do those. I'll show you what they are because this is a CPU mineable coin. So I am going to recommend that you use the no CPU extra argument. You use the multi GPU so that it uses all the GPUs in the system and that you use the sync option and then the Malib endpoint and then you put that uh, endpoint right here for the echo pool. So, all of that here is what I would recommend. This comes directly from the guide that was provided by the pool devs in their Discord channel, which I'll leave a link to all the links here down in the description below for you. So you can go ahead and click apply. And then at this point, it is as simple as just going to one of your rigs. You can see here we're already mining. And then, you know, highlighting, you can go up to your flight sheet, do more coins, click DNX, and then at that point you can just select the DNX flight sheet and it'll be off to the races. So at this point you can see here that we have pretty much everything mining. It's showing at 3.276 kilohash a second. I did add on more rigs, we'll talk about that too. And that is at about 9.277 kilowatt hours. Now. This is not profitable in my farm to be clear right now. And there is probably some tweaking and tuning, not 
probably there definitely is some tweaking and tuning but as you guys know on this channel we cover the tweaking and tuning in a completely different video so i have not gotten to the tune everything i've only gotten to the how to but as a little added bonus here before we get let you guys go you got the how to done you got it figured out the last step of course to that would be taking your wallet address coming to the worker statistics pasting it in here and doing the look up button and then you'll get all of your data and you can see here we have all the rigs listed out individually we're showing 3.41 kilohash a second on the pool and i was only mining with like 2.26 kilohash a second earlier today and we'll let this kind of settle out and start to see what the real payout is here but other than that like you're gonna get it into your wallet and then if you want to exchange it there are two exchanges right now there's a usdt pair on textbit.io and i'll leave a link for them down below right now it's at 13 cents per dynex and then there is a bitcoin pairing on tradeogre.com or dot or, or yeah dot com i got that correctly at 12 cents uh, per coin so this is pretty much where you're at, right? You got two exchanges, which is pretty good so far as far as exchange availability. You got a mining pool that is working that could probably use a little bit of work. Hopefully they'll be good as we scale them up. Let's see if we break it, boys. We'll find out. And as far as the fun part to get some numbers, this is a very interesting algorithm because this algorithm in particular really cares about one thing and it's one thing that no other algorithms ever cared about as far as like from a mining performance hash rate amount perspective now other algorithms have cared about this but it's a, about the size of the dag this is a completely different setup and it's because it is their own algo and obviously they have their own miner and there's no other miners like bz miner or anything supporting it yet bz will probably be the first I, i'll take that bet by the way but if you are one, curious what it is is it is all based off of the total amount of vram now vram speed does appear to count here uh power consumption is very low on this algorithm and other than that really the overclocks the few overclocks i did didn't appear to make much of a difference and setting like your power limits doesn't make much of a difference it all appears to be purely about the amount of vram on the cards now there is an advantage for gddr6x over gddr6 and there appears to be a slight advantage of course for gddr6 over gddr5 but not by that much and you'll start to see that here as we go through these because as you can see the g the gtx 1660 supers with the six gigabytes of vram is doing about 47 hash a second and in the minor it'll show about 50 hash a second and it'll calm back down there is a little bit of boost that you can get but we'll talk about that in the tuning video and then if we move on to our gtx 1060s this is where it gets interesting the 1063 gig which is half of what the 1660 supers has is at 22 but you'll also notice that our power was almost cut in half too at 27 watts and if we go to the six gigabyte version right the p10690s that we have here they actually get the same amount of hash rate as the 1660 supers pretty crazy and you'll see this trend continue right if we go to the light hash rate rig we have the 3060 with 12 gigabytes of memory doing 93 hash a second but if we go to the gt or rtx 3080 with only 10 gigabytes of memory we lose where it's actually performing worse than the 3060 at 78 hash a second then if we take a look at the 3070 ti with only eight gigabytes it goes down to 64 3070 62 3060 ti 62 because we only have that little bit of memory pretty interesting now if we go to our random rig here you have the a2000 six gigabytes sitting right around that 43 hash right 1066 gigabyte 46 1660 ti 47 666 oh here's one 
A4000, 122 hash a second. Why? 16 gigabytes of memory, okay? It pretty much scales exactly with memory. And the, mem and the power appears to scale with that as well quite cl closely, which is very intriguing. 3070s, we already looked at those. I do have a couple in the 3702 here that are interesting. For example, the 12 gigabytes on the 2080 Ti sitting around 84, right? Not quite as good as the GDDR6X, right? But still pretty good. And then we got the 10 gigabyte on the 3080. 3050 light hash rate right here. RTX 3050, eight gigabytes of memory, 63 hash a second at 67 watts. We finally have a reason to buy 3050s if this was a bull run, right? But you also have the potential here for the 3080 12 gigs to perform quite well, right? They'd probably be around like the 100. So there's, there's a reason now for the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte and the RTX 3050s, as well as, of course, those RTX 3060 12 gigabytes as well, which are very enticing. So it ended up being an extremely interesting algorithm to play with, and I definitely look forward to it. The 3090s here with 24 gigabytes of uh, memory is using 104 or 194 hash a second. I think we could limit this power down a little bit. We'll start playing with it and let you guys know. So there's a brief look at what all of the GPUs are doing. Obviously the G GTX 1063 gigabytes, or I mean six gigabytes, excuse me, look very enticing as well as the 3060 12 gigabytes seem to be kind of like the two extremely high performing low cost options for this particular algorithm as it sits right now. Of course, once we get unlocked over to the AMD side, what happens if we are able to throw 5700s on there? What happens if we are able to throw RX 580s and 480s on there? It could get very, very exciting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something. If you did, hit the like, comment, subscribe down below. I am enjoying my new job. I do realize we don't have as many videos, but you know, the YouTubes ain't paying what they used to back in the bull run. So it is what it is. I'll see you next Tuesday.